So, um, good morning. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, all participants in this online event, uh, Building Entrepreneurial Capacity in Research and Innovation Projects, organized in collaboration with Youth Makers Hub and many thanks to Enrich in Africa for this support. Uh, this virtual event uh, is a unique exploration into enhancing entrepreneurial potential within research and uh, innovation initiatives. I'm Dr. Ahmed Malel. I am the regional representative for UAccess uh, Africa. I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Marilina Maragu, co-founder and uh, uh, project coordinator of Youth Makers Hub, and also our speakers for today, uh, Mrs. Faith Blackmore, project manager, uh, Stingbis Europa Zentrum, and uh, Mr. Yo. Abu Jaffe, Director of uh, Center for Social Innovation in Ghana. Uh, your questions uh, must be submitted in Zoom. Uh, the webinar will be recorded and will be available in your Access Africa website as well as slides. So uh, I will start first of all my, my, to present your Access Africa before moving, uh, uh, giving the floor to uh, uh, Mrs. Mar Marilina. Okay, let me share my screen before. Okay, uh, so uh, I will present your access uh, Africa and uh, uh, here uh, I will present your access worldwide. So your access worldwide is an initiative of uh, the European Commission established with the aim to provide free access to information about research in Europe, opportunities for research funding, international collaboration and transnational mobility. It links researchers in the worldwide to Europe, mainly in Africa to Europe. And furthermore, the network is open to all nationalities and research fields. So um, uh, we, we are in, in, in the world. So we, ha we, we have nine hubs in North America, Latin America and Caribbean, India, China, Japan, Korea, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, and finally in Africa. And uh, uh, the main tasks of UAccess Africa, first of all, management and development of the UAccess Africa network uh, to support for African researchers, promoting European research opportunities in Africa, and finally reinforce the networking with all RNI African actors. So uh, this is the platform of Euraxis, and as you see here, we have the tab of worldwide, and the, in the top we have Africa. And just click on on, and after that we will see the website of Euraxis Africa. And please click on this yellow button to sign up for free membership to Euraxis Africa. So here, this is a, a, a video to uh, summarize all activities uh, already done uh, since 2022. So,
Okay, uh, just to mention here that for each event, uh, usually we give a certificate of attendance. Okay, uh, just to mention here that for uh, all uh, attendees, uh, of course, and what can we do for you? First of all, promote your, uh, your national research landscape, promote your funding opportunities, promote your, your access network, invite speakers from the, your network and connect our researchers with your research labs and finally connect you to your European scientific diaspora. So our tools are the website, usually social media, flash notes, newsletter, info sessions, and practical workshops. And as you see here, there is a lot of news. Uh, each uh, every day we we publish a lot of news related to mobility, to related to opportunities given to African uh, researchers to be involved more and more in in, in research area in Europe, and of course. For events, you can participate for free. You can also uh, watch the recording video for each event and download all slides. For your access portal, in general, we have plus than 2 million visitors per year and 1.2 million page views uh, per month, and it is for free. And as you see here, for jobs, Actually, we have more than 10,000, 9,000 jobs already there, and you can use uh, the filter, you can select, uh, you can put the keywords, and you can select country, and of course, you can apply. And for your access uh, platform, you can use this platform already to uh, uh, partner search, and you can find members, and you can find organizations just to, to have the the information actually we have more than 22000 uh, organizations already there in the platform of your access so join us be informed be proactive click on this button and join our community of researchers uh, for me it's okay we can uh, of course we can uh, follow us in facebook and uh, x and twitter and linkedin uh, instagram and youtube and uh, feel free to contact us uh, by email africa at your access.net. No, I, I will give the floor to uh, Mrs. Marilina to present you the Makers Hub. So, Marilina, uh, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ahmed. Uh, it's really nice uh, being here and having um, uh, this. Uh, really interesting and to the point, uh, point webinar, what we are trying to do with your access is to uh, develop like tailor-made like uh, webinars for the need of uh, uh, this specific target group. So uh, before we dive into more information from our distinctive uh, speakers, I would like to present myself and the organization I represent. Uh, so I am uh, Marilena Maragou. Uh, I come from uh, Greece and Cyprus. Uh, but uh, I am all around the world as uh, uh, the project uh, goes. I, I represent Youth Makers Hub. And let me share my screen. Uh, I will tell you more things about uh, our organization and uh, 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 like uh, drive you through our uh, website. Uh, I'm the co-founder and the project coordinator of uh, Youth Makers Hub. Uh, at Youth Makers Hub, we create social change uh, through impact-driven projects in Europe and Africa. What we are trying uh, to do, and uh, we are doing that, uh, we cultivate a new generation of empowered young individuals that they really want to create uh, positive change in their communities. So we really work uh, with the communities uh, on the ground in several uh, places in uh, Europe and Africa. Uh, what we are doing as an organization, we are doing two things. We create and disseminate impact. Uh, Youth Makers Hub, we serve as a catalyst for uh, social change and we provide the necessary tools and knowledge and um, foster collaboration between uh, Europe and Africa uh, through capacity building and communication expertise. Uh, we empower organization and individuals uh, more specifically to unlock their full uh, potential. A little bit more about uh, uh, who we are, uh, a European non-profit uh, organization. We are based in Athens, uh, in Greece, uh, but uh, we work uh, in several countries in uh, Europe and uh, Africa. Uh, our mission is uh, to serve as a catalyst for social change 
uh, by providing, as mentioned before, the tools required and uh, all the projects that we are uh, developing, they're like tailor-made based on the, on the current trends, on the current needs of uh, our target group. Um, regarding the expertise we have as a, an organization, uh, it's from the one side is uh, capacity building. So we are focusing on um, uh, delivering uh, workshops, webinars, uh, hackathons, uh, uh, any trend of uh, trend uh, methodology of delivering the capacity building uh, by making them super interactive. And regarding the fields of our operation, uh, they are based like on uh, the skills are for young people that can include soft skills, digital skills, uh, podcast, youth uh, work, uh, environment, sustainability. Uh, we have a really big pool of uh, uh, trainers. Uh, so we adapt our uh, webinars, our capacity building activities in general and projects uh, based on the needs of uh, uh, our target group. Uh, more specifically, we have um, uh, capacity building activities for EU funded opportunities. So we empower young people on how they can be informed about uh, the opportunities under uh, the EU. That can be Erasmus, youth exchanges, training courses, uh, European Solidarity Corps. And then we are doing customized uh, proposal writing, again on Erasmus Plus, Key Action 1, Key Action 2, and ESC. And then depending on the needs, we can customize it also for other calls. And then we have the skills development in several um, topics as project management, communication, uh, pitching, and uh, much more. It never ends. Uh, currently, we are we, we did like for uh, chat GPT, for artificial intelligence, how you can build your CV uh, with chat GPT and other AI uh, tools. Uh, so we are trying like to be updated uh, for the skills required. And then our second uh, expertise is the communication and uh, dissemination. Uh, we are the work package leader in several projects, uh, either like for um, currently like for Horizon, for capacity building for universities. And we are delivering uh, the expertise uh, mainly like for projects or other organizations for communication and dissemination. Um, we have like um, under that, uh, we develop a comprehensive communication and dissemination strategy. Uh, we create branding and visual identity development, whatever has to do uh, with the visual identity. We are always up to date, updated with the trends uh, that they are currently, uh, because we don't just uh, uh, do visuals. We develop visuals that they are like uh, innovative, they are interactive, and uh, they because. Being the communication dissemination uh, leader, it's really important because uh, you are responsible for communicating the impact of the project and what is happening. Uh, we are doing the web and graphic uh, design services. Uh, we are really uh, into that. And uh, we don't just build like uh, websites. Uh, we build websites that they take awards. We currently took the award of uh, uh, one of the projects that we're handling for African EU in the um, .eu web award. So we're really uh, into that uh, part. Social media management and content creation. Uh, we have been uh, viral hashtag number one in Tanzania, in Uganda, in the boot camps. Uh, we're really in Twitter and currently we are covering uh, in Twitter uh, this event. So you can also follow online what we are doing. Of course, promotion on material, communication and uh, public relations. Um, we have several uh, projects uh, going on. Uh, you can check like in our website. I will also send the link so I will not go through of what we have achieved. And you can check here, we have the numbers. Uh, we are an organization that uh, we're about to celebrate our five year uh, anniversary. And uh, what we have achieved in five years is we have implemented 27 projects in 13 uh, countries in Europe and Africa, uh, implementing 500 physical and digital events and having uh, uh, over 1000 direct beneficiaries over 380 cities and 80 countries is like the statistics we created also for the five year uh, anniversary. Um, so this is us, this is uh, what we are doing. Uh, of course, you can follow us uh, uh, online, you can check uh, uh, our work, you can connect with us. Uh, we have like several opportunities through the projects because we are traveling 
uh, to several African countries for the events we are doing. And uh, that's from our side. And of course, if you need something, you can find us everywhere online. Thank you. Yeah. I right back to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for this nice presentation. So now we will give the floor to uh, Mrs. Five Blackmore. So uh, Five, the floor is yours, please. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. So give me a second while I do all the uh, technical side of things, and then I can be with you. Okay, yeah, so good morning. Uh, my name is Faith Blakemore. I work for a company called Steinbeis Europa Centrum. We're based here in uh, Europe, uh, in Germany, um, but we work on international projects. So we work, uh, we have worked uh, in China, in the US, um, all over, but at the moment we have a strong focus on Africa uh, with a number of projects that we're working on. So um, I've been asked to speak to you today about strengthening the innovation capacities of EU research and innovation projects. Um, so I'm gonna um, go, do a bit of a, a quick dive uh, into things now um, and hopefully uh, save your questions till the end. We will have some time for questions. Um, so I'm I'm not sure who we've got uh, with us today and how much knowledge you have. So I'm kind of going back to the beginning in some ways, and I'm going to give a very brief uh, tour of uh, Horizon Europe, which is the current uh, work program from uh, the European Union to fund uh, research and innovation and development. So um, there are actually three different types of funding that I'm going to cover at the moment. Um, they are the coordination and support actions. These are things that uh, support, for example, the development of networks, uh, the development of uh, social innovation, things that are happening. So they're, they're coordinating and collaborating uh, across different areas. We also have research and innovation projects, um, and these are funding exactly what they say, research development. So uh, it doesn't have to be just research. It can be research and innovation together, an innovative project coming out of it at the end, uh, piloting something, creating a prototype, for example. So this is more sort of early stage uh, research uh, that's being done, but for the purpose of creating impact, uh, obviously, for civil society out there. Uh, we have the final one, which is then the innovation action. Um, and this one is focused on developing an innovation itself, a product, something that goes out in the world, something that's um, going to be able to create impacts for markets. Um, as you can see there, I have put down the funding rate. So for CSAs and for R&I actions, it's 100% funding. Uh, but for innovation actions, it's 70% funding for for-profit companies. So if you're an SME uh, or a startup or anything like that, it's 70% funding and 30% needs to be provided by yourself. Uh, but it's 100% funding for not-for-profits. So just to give you that kind of understanding uh, of what, uh, what the different funding streams are that I'm talking about today. Um, all of these are consortium run projects, so they're not for individual companies, they are uh, offered only to consortium. Uh, there has to be three or more organizations within a consortium, and I would say for the kind of funding that we're talking about here, uh, you're looking at more like eight, nine, ten, sometimes as high as 20 um, sort of organizations that can be involved in these, because they are fundamentally about collaboration. Just a little point to note here, there are many other funding streams that are available from the European Union, either through Horizon Europe or through some of their other programs that they run. Uh, but as I say, I'm just going to focus on these because these, for me, are the ones that we work on the most. So obviously I have more knowledge about these, uh, but they're also, as far as I can tell, more relevant uh, to you guys in the audience. So what do we have? So I'm just going to give you a bit of a, a framework here of what, what the Horizon Europe uh, program, uh, let's say, process is. So first of all, you have your work program and your work program is the overarching thematic area and the political drivers uh, that are driving the actions. Then you have your destinations and the destinations then are basically the work program broken down into different expectations, different scopes, different actions that they want to see happen, but still at quite a high level. You then have your calls. This is when you start to focus in on a specific area, maybe a sector or a, spe a special thematic area. So you start to have calls. Um, which uh, which can focus you down. And then as you're looking for what you might be interested in, uh, the call level is, is very important. 
Um, and then you get your individual topics. And these topics are the individual project opportunities. Um, so these are um, the actual calls that are saying, we are looking for a project to do this, 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 and this, and this is how much money is available, yada, yada. So that's, uh, that's the different um, areas. And then obviously, finally, you have your project. So at the bottom of everything, the project is what you do. You write a proposal. If you win, uh, your project can then be implemented. However, these things, um, as you may know or may not know, um, are very complicated. So um, these Horizon Europe process, uh, it can be very complex. Uh, there's a lot to consider. There's a lot to read between the lines when you are reading the, the topics or reading the calls. Um, it is a strong community that's out there of people that work on these uh, projects, but it is also a limited community, as in there's a lot of people with knowledge in this area, um, but not everybody has the knowledge on how to write the proposals, how to how to deliver them, how to coordinate, how to deal with all the administration. It is a full time job dealing with the administration. Um, and also the actions are limited to the topic requirements. So it's not a matter of saying, hey, we've got a new innovation, we've got a new idea and we want funding to be able to do it. No, they have the ideas of saying we want something to be done in this area and then you need to fit your, uh, your idea to that specific topic, for example. Um, there's also very tight deadlines. So they might open in, say, January and close in, say, March or April. Um, so what they do do is they offer um, all the different projects uh, that they are wanting. They offer it in forthcoming calls. Uh, so when you go on the funding and tenders portal, uh, which I think, Marilena, maybe if you could uh, put a link in the chat just to the funding and tenders portal, um, you can actually see what's forthcoming. That means you can have a chance to plan in advance of what might be interesting for you. But when the call opens, there's only sort of three to four months to be able to uh, write and uh, get your proposal submitted. So these are some of the maybe smaller issues or bigger issues, depending on how you see it. Um, however, there are also some be benefits to this. Uh, for a start off, there are many, many opportunities to a wide range of industries and sectors that are available. There's also a focus on exploration and not necessarily success. So the whole point of Horizon Europe is that they have uh, an idea of what they want to see happen. You put in your proposal of what you think you can do, but it's about learnings. So it's about trying things, piloting things, gathering learnings. Obviously, success is, is what is wanted. But if success doesn't happen in a specific area or with a specific KPI, it's just a matter of saying why that has happened. So again, all about learnings. There is also, as we said before, an experienced um, sort of community that are out there. So there are companies uh, that can support you if you are new to all this. They can support with entry into either understanding and doing call analyses uh, or doing uh, writing proposals, for example. So there are people to support. You don't have to be alone uh, in all of this. There's also large budgets, so it is um, it is good if you're looking to do something and actually have an impact somewhere, there are really large budgets to support R&D activities. Finally, uh, and, and interestingly, I hope for, for you guys, is that African countries, not all, you do need to check uh, which countries are eligible, but African countries in general are eligible to receive EU money under these calls. So not many people know this. So when you're looking at uh, digital or you're looking at health or you're looking at whatever, it may not say Africa in it, but if you look in the eligibility criteria, most African countries are eligible, or the companies within those countries are eligible for receiving the actual funding. So this is something that I know we at Steinmeier and I know Marilena and I know um, Ahmed are trying to do, which is to support this collaboration work between Africa and Europe to encourage more African organizations to engage in some of these projects. So what, what can you do? Um, so the first thing I'd say is check out the calls, check out the website, check out the funding and tenders portal, get familiar with it, start searching for what's available. You can put keywords in and see what you want to do. Uh, then conduct a call analysis. So with the keywords, you can start to say, I don't know, health, for example, start to see which calls, which topics have got health in, in the title and see what things are of interest to you. You can also actively participate in information days, webinars such as today, um, activities that are always available from the European Commission. They're always doing different things, but you need to look at the thematic areas because they will cover different thematics for different information days. All of the information is available from the European Commission website. 
I will say it can be complex because it is a massive, massive website. Um, so do take time to explore to make sure you find the right information that you need. You can always come back to companies like ours, like Youth Makers Hub, like your access, if you get lost at any point. So there are people there, as I say, to support. But also fundamentally know your own goals. It's not just that, you know, kid in a candy shop, you know, go in and take all the candy that's available. Um, for your company, your organization, know what it is that you have available, know what your resources are and know what your goals are. What do you want to achieve? Then that can help with your call analysis and finding out which topics are of most interest to you. Also start building your network with events like today, with other events, especially in person, that is really helpful to meet people, talk to people. Start building your understanding of who is out there, what they are doing, where the strengths are, and who you might need to engage in some of these uh, actions. Also understand your own barriers and limitations. You know, Marilena was saying about uh, the fact that they're very strong in doing dissemination and communication. If you don't know anything about marketing and you don't know anything about doing communication actions, then don't put yourself forward as doing dissemination and communication. Know what your goals are, know what your strengths are, but also know what your barriers are so that you don't oversell and then end up getting into trouble later on. So it's about being focused in what you want to do. But also research the market. So actually understand what is going on politically. So we have the AU EU innovation agenda that's been launched recently with a lot of uh, sort of thematic areas, goals, impacts that they want to see happen. This is a politically driven uh, initiative between the African, Europe, uh, African Union and the European Union to find out what they're wanting so that you can actually start to target yourself and, and, and move yourself in that direction to be able to meet some of the requirements of the calls. Also look at industrial needs, so actually what's happening in the markets and how can you potentially as a researcher start working in a direction that you can collaborate with industry because these kind of things are very interesting for EU projects. Again, just going to highlight experienced companies are out there that can help you. It can be quite a, a, a forest that's out there. It's quite difficult to see the trees for the forest. Um, but there are people there that can help you gain access to this stuff. So don't feel overwhelmed. But this webinar is not just for me to tell you about how this kind of stuff works. It's about how this stuff can be strengthened and maximized. So that's what I really want to focus on today. So I'm gonna give you some tips uh, through the case study of Enrich in Africa, which is a project um, that we've been running for the past three years. Uh, we as Steinbeis are the coordinators of Enrich in Africa. Um, and Enrich in Africa is a Horizon 2020 CSA project. So Horizon 2020 is the work program, which you should know about now, uh, that came before Horizon Europe. Um, and a CSA, coordination and support action, that's the type of project that we're running here. Um, it was an extension of existing Enrich Actions that had happened in the four years prior uh, to us starting. Um, and these Enrich Actions were focused in uh, Brazil, in the US and in China. So there was already a template of how things had worked. However, these Enrich Actions were focused on specifically supporting scientific research uh, organizations. Um, this one, however, the topic requirement was to create a network of incubators and accelerators across Africa and Europe. So this was a bit different. This was something uh, that was starting to, to take things in a different direction and also required, obviously, uh, a different thematic, a different uh, bunch of partners, um, because this is something that we, we needed to look at in a different way. So despite having been involved in the previous Enrich Actions, we needed to rethink things to be able to meet the topic requirements uh, that was put out for this call. Um, we did, uh, because of our actions in, in the previous Enrich projects, we did understand some of the limitations, some of the pro problems that had occurred. As I said before, the learnings, so some things weren't successful, but that was okay, because we could take those learnings and we could then use that to build the Enrich proposal and the Enrich project, which we won. So what did we do? For a start off with the, the concept, we, uh, we chose a human centric idea. So it was a human centric project that was working to, uh, to understand the user needs. And when I say user here, that's, that's kind of industry language for the stakeholders, the people who were involved. So understanding what our stakeholder needs were, therefore developing solutions for those needs, but 
in co-creation with the users themselves in order to best meet those needs and also to generate impact for the innovation ecosystem of Africa and Europe. So this was the kind of our main, our main goals, really. The way that I always say it is that whatever we were doing in Enrich in Africa, it was built by the community for the community. So it was not a matter of us going in saying, we're going to do this to the community. It was making sure that the community was involved in everything that we were developing. Um, so what does that mean, though? So human centric. So we have things like uh, I, I don't know if you guys are aware UX or user experience is um, a growing area, um, very, very relevant to pretty much everything <laughs> that I do or that we do. Um, so I always use this as a fundamental basis uh, for developing uh, a lot of our proposals or a lot of our ideas. Um, and this is the UX Honeycomb developed by Peter Morville in 2004. Um, and what this says is that for things to be successful, they need to be useful, desirable, credible, findable, accessible, and usable. So if all of these things come together, ultimately you're able to create value. And I'm just gonna say, remember that because you're gonna need that later on. So what did we do with Enrich in Africa? Well, based on that kind of idea, that kind of goals that we'd got, um, we were looking at, OK, well, what has come before? What are the learnings? What has what has happened that we can um, bring into this project? What is the current environment politically and uh, in, and industrially, I suppose? Uh, what is the direction? What's happening? And also, what are the needs driving the future? How can we bring all of this together in one project? So what we decided to do was create Enrich in Africa as a network of incubators and accelerators, meeting the, the topic requirement, but also uh, speaking to the political activities. So finding out what was happening politically, working with the uh, political organizations uh, to understand what they want, but also passing information from our network up to them. So they are understanding the, uh, the requirements on the ground, the needs, the impacts that are happening to help them drive their political initiatives. We were then working with incubation and acceleration ecosystems with hubs across Europe and Africa uh, to understand what they wanted and develop services for them, uh, with them then providing us information about their needs and anything that we might need to iterate or change. They in turn were then developing and delivering uh, activities for the entrepreneurs and innovators across Europe and Africa who we were connecting to. So we were creating this multi-sided platform business model, making sure that we brought both sides together or all sides in this case, uh, to make sure that value could be driven. Um, I think I've just, no, nope. click too quickly. <laughs> so what does that mean here? So we, uh, we created, this is our consortium, as you remember, a consortium uh, has to be created for EU projects. So this is our partner list that we had. So we uh, we did something different within Rich in Africa. So instead of having the normal EU type knowledgeable people in the in the uh, in the consortium, uh, we chose to venture out and actually include the incubators and accelerators from across Africa and Europe in the consortium itself. So we had a number of organisations uh, that were working with us who were already delivering the actions that we were seeking to deliver within the project. We then also had some innovation support organizations. Uh, so those guys from across Europe and Africa who were working with maybe some of the um, ancillary uh, stakeholders. But what does that mean? Well, actually, the guys on uh, from across Africa and Europe, they didn't necessarily have any experience in EU projects. So this was actually quite a big risk for us. We were getting people into the project who had no experience of how this works, how the finance works, how the admin works, how you do reporting. There is a lot of processes. Um, so this was quite a risk for us. We had experienced in some organizations in some ways, but little to no experience in the other sides. So we knew we had to work in a very hands-on way to make sure we brought everybody along with us. But what did that mean? Well, that meant that actually the guys that were from the incubation and acceleration organizations could hit the ground running. These guys could actually do the work that they needed to do within the project without having to learn how to do it first. Um, and we had strength uh, in our experience to be able to deliver the ancillary tasks and management. And what that meant then is we could deliver a load of services for the champions. I'm listing them there. I won't go through them all individually. 
Um, and then we could do on the other side, the ancillary tasks and management, which meant that we could deliver things by the champions and champions are our incubators and accelerators for the champions. And what does that mean? We were able to create impact. So we were able to triple the number of champion members that we had in the network over three years, uh, deliver support to over 500 startups and SMEs, and create a legal entity that was able to provide the legacy of what we were doing within the project. So the legacy outcomes from the project, new legal entity based in Cape Town in South Africa, transitioning the knowledge and the services of the project ongoing, uh, with active participation of the project partners in this new legal entity and with further engagement for this legal entity in new EU projects such as SEED. And SEED, for you to be uh, knowledgeable about this, uh, is about strengthening the EU and AU research ecosystem. So this is uh, specifically focused on a new user group that we weren't including in Enrich in Africa previously because that was only incubation and acceleration organisations. Uh, SEED is now taking that knowledge and developing it specifically for the research uh, organizations and ecosystem. So this is something new, but involving Enrich in Africa and acting as sustainability for what we did. So what does that mean? Well, it means one of the impacts we've got is balance. So we've got this tangible ecosystem impact that we're uh, delivering on the ground. But we've also got a balance within the partnership and within the actions of strong project management and implementation skills. This balance, I would say, is really important for the success of these types of projects. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about such projects. So keys to success, what does that mean? Um, so what I would say here, I've put some words down that are the, the key words that I would say uh, you need to consider when building such projects. Having passion for the area, not just doing these projects because there's money behind it, doing it because you are passionate about achieving the impacts that you want to deliver. Having the experience to be able to do it, to make sure that you don't have to learn while on the job. Uh, building your networks, making sure you've got a strong network that you can rely on. A strong community as well. That's not just the number of people, but the feeling between the people. Make sure that these are good relationships that you've got. Make sure that there is diversity. You can't do everything alone. Make sure that there is a diverse group of people that are delivering these projects so you can rely on each other and work together to collaboratively deliver the projects. Keep yourself aware of what is happening constantly, what is happening politically, what is happening in industry, what's happening in your sector, to make sure you can re respond and react as the project moves. But use your creativity. Don't just think inside the box, think outside the box or make your box bigger. Make sure that you are thinking about the ways that you can be creative in this because this will drive impact. And finally here, flexibility. So make sure you are flexible to change. So yeah, there might be things that fundamentally change, such as a global pandemic that happened to us, whereby you suddenly have to change some of the things you wanted to deliver because you can't do that anymore. So yes, there are processes to be able to do that in the projects, but you need to be creative and flexible to be able to move or roll with the punches, we might say. Oh, yes, there you go. I forgot that I'd animated those. <laughs> And what does that mean? So the key thing that I want to say to you guys that I want you to take away, if you're getting involved in EU projects in any way, value, value, value. Everything that you're doing, I know we use the word impact for things and that's really good as well, but ultimately what we want to do is have value for the people involved, for the partners, for the stakeholders, whether that's politically uh, or industrially, whether that's SMEs, startups, investors, whoever you're working with, everybody is seeking value. So by building and using these tips that I've given you today, um, I'm really hoping that in any projects you're engaging in, you can deliver true value. So that's everything from my side. Um, I've given my details there, but I've given Jan, my colleague Jan's uh, email address. Uh, he's the contact for Seed and he will be uh, your main contact uh, for moving forward with things. So just to know if you're taking down the email address, uh, do contact Jan. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to open up the floor if anybody has any questions. Marilena or Ahmed, I'm going to trust you to help me to understand what <laughs> questions there well, are. Yeah, th thank you very much for uh, this nice presentation. I think uh, there's a lot of thanks to... to and we, we have received also um, uh, some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we, we before moving to, to, uh, to questions, uh, because we, we have with us uh, also today... Uh, 
uh, Mr. Uh, Yao Abu Jamfi, the director of Center of for Social Innovation in Ghana. So uh, we can give the floor to to give okay. some testimonial before moving to Q and A session. Please. I, I stop my I stop my screen then, just so that you can yes, um, yes, yes. come back yes. and see everyone. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you very much, Ahmed, and uh, thank you, Faith. That was a, a brilliant uh, presentation. And earlier on by uh, Marlena, it was, it was a brilliant uh, presentation as well. I, I'm sure that for that now, at the moment, um, a lot of our, our, our participants have gotten an idea as to uh, the sort of projects that are on the under the Euro assets and also uh, the innovation projects that are supported by uh, European money. And also, have, uh, they have an idea around strengthening the entrepreneurial capacities of research uh, and innovation projects. What I want to add is that um, whilst we are thinking global, uh, we should also be acting local. So for instance, um, when Faith was having the presentation, the key uh, point is, um, it is not about uh, telling you, uh, the actors on the ground, what you need to do, but it's also about bringing something to the table. Um, so you need to look at the broader uh, scope and then you bring something to the table. For instance, um, it, it, across Africa, there is need for research and innovation into the, the in indigenous knowledge um, around uh, uh, issues of localization, um, around uh, also research that is very relevant and innovation that is very relevant to our local economies uh, because of COVID and, and because of uh, the need for uh, projects that are also localized uh, to address local needs. So, of course, the the the, the bigger project is looking at is looking at how we build synergies. It's looking at how we we also work together. But we need to also identify areas where we can make the most impact, uh, which is how do we localize our research in comm in commercializing the research? How do we ensure that our local industries are also interested? Uh, in, in the research and uh, projects that we are developing, uh, not just for academic sake or for publication sake, or to ensure that we are able to uh, make use of the money. But how do we, the question is, how do we ensure that if we, have, we are developing research and building capacities, how do we ensure that we bring in local industry uh, to support our local development, uh, which is very important. Um, again, I must add that um, in build, building the, uh, the capacity, it's not just about the research uh, per se, but it's also about human resources. So when we are developing re, uh, our projects uh, for funding, uh, we need to identify the human resources that need to be developed. Uh, because whilst, whilst we develop the human resources and, and we build capacity around the human resources, then we are able to implement projects that are more impactful and, and effective. Uh, so for instance, I've, be, I've been uh, a member of uh, uh, research groups, Africa Lakes, and, and also Open Air, Open African Innovation Research. And one of the key things that we did was to build, uh, build a capacity, build a capacity of people who are involved in the research, and then build a capacity of institutions that those we are building the capacity involved in the research are coming from. And then we also develop local projects. Then lo these local projects would respond to the local needs of the people. So this is a, a very excellent opportunity uh, for researchers and innovators uh, based in Africa uh, to be able to partner, our Europe, um, you know, engage with our European partners and build synergies whilst we are addressing our local issues uh, that will make, uh, would ensure that we, we have transformative development uh, across the, the continent. So uh, Ahmed and, then, and then my, my colleagues, this is what I will add for now. But as the questions come in, we can be able to address them uh, now and then. Yes, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for uh, uh, this kind of details about uh, the importance of uh, entrepreneur in research and innovation uh, projects. So we we move forward to to uh, to give the floor to some live questions, and we can start uh, with uh, uh, Kellen. Yeah, Kellen. Uh, please. Open your mic, please. And present yourself before, please. Kellen. Mm. 
We have also John Michel Sars. Yeah, I, I'm just saying that um, everybody's muted. So, um, Kellen or, or Jean Michel, um, you would need to unmute yourself to be able to ask the question. Um, we can't hear you, unfortunately. Yes. I um oh my gosh. Yeah, please go ahead, go get in. I'm okay now. Yeah, just all right, thank you. Yeah, you, you. You seem to be connected to two devices. I put a question there on the chat uh, regarding partners which is always uh, difficult because we have tried in the past to get uh, partners on some European projects. Do you have uh, a specific database where we can access partners for specific projects that are on the portal? Okay, thank you. Uh... Faith, you 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 can just add a response if you want. Um, yeah, I I can't answer for your access. So I think the question was whether your access have a database of of people. Uh, what I can do is say um, so from our side we don't necessarily have a database, but we have our networks. So obviously working in this day in day out, we do understand the networks. Um, we do have within the Enrich in Africa Center, which I presented, which is the new organization, uh, they are offering support, especially for African entities that are looking to connect into EU projects. Um, so you could reach out to them. Um, the email address, um, I, I can write it in the chat afterwards. It's just hello at enrichinafrica.com. Very simple. Mm. Uh, but you can reach out to them there. Um, and they can look through their networks. Obviously, they have the champion network um, that they can reach out to. They're also involved in the upcoming seed project, which we are involved in as well. We are coordinating. And I gave Jan's email address at the end of my uh, presentation. Um, I would reach out to these organizations if you are interested in a specific call. Um, if you want um, call analyses doing and getting access to partners and consortia and that kind of thing, we offer that as a paid for service. But if you're just looking to sort of understand and, and figure stuff out, this is why I'm saying build your networks, get in touch with people, attend events like this, start keeping your own database, because it totally depends on what your area is, what your sector focus is, as to which partners you need. But yes, us, Youth Maker Hub, um, obviously your access, uh, they're good starting points. Thank you. Um, my second question is, um, you have uh, brought out the question of politics. How do you navigate? Can you explain a little bit about the, the influence of politics on the possibility of getting a project funded? I think we can probably all talk to you about this one because we all know this kind of thing. Um, I would say, um, obviously, from the EU side, um, there are very specific um, agendas that they're working to in terms of what are their focuses. Um, so we know at the moment digitalization is a massive focus for the EU. Obviously, we have things like uh, artificial intelligence, things like that. Uh, but you can explore through the European Union website what are the key areas they're focusing on within the work program itself uh, for Horizon Europe. It will give you specific indicators of what they're focusing on purely through which topics and which calls they're putting out there. So you can already start to, to understand what their drivers are. There are other documents out there, um, reports from the European Council meetings, for example. Uh, you can start to read some of that. There's some interesting documents out there about what they want to do with internationalization, for example, and supporting Africa. So there are some, um, some different documents you can find when you look at out there. Uh, from the African Union side, um, we do have this AU-EU innovation agenda, which is this new political document, a political initiative that has been set up between the two regions specifically to support research and innovation. So they have four different, or actually I think five now, uh, thematic areas. So things like public health, capacities for science, 
um, is another thematic area. Innovation and technology, uh, green and uh, sort of sustainability, um, and then cross-cutting is the fifth one that they've added. So there are some pillars. Um, I'd say not, not all political initiatives are relevant to these Horizon Europe calls. Um, but there are some overarching things to consider. What is happening at the UN, the sustainable development goals? Everybody is looking to reach these kind of things, whether in Africa or in Europe. So some of these umbrella actions, get yourself familiar and knowledgeable about those. Attend events like you're attending today. You've already taken the first step by attending an event like this, getting the knowledge, getting to meet the people. Um, so I would say keep doing what you're doing. Keep building that network. Um, and keep reading what political documents are coming out there. Thank you. Thank you for that answer to those two questions. Thank you. I'll probably have another question later on, but let me give the opportunity to other people. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we move to Jean-Michel. Jean-Michel, if you can, uh, please. Go ahead. Okay, we move to uh, Rashid. Hi, good morning there. Yeah, good morning. Hi, uh, I would like to thank you all for this event, uh, especially for the outstanding presentation by uh, Faith. And uh, my first uh, request, can we have a copy of this, uh, I mean, of the adding value presentation that was just introduced to us by Faith. And the second thing, uh, as an NCB from Libya, I have three questions always being raised by our researchers who are trying to join, like, you know, or to be part of Horizon Europe uh, projects. Uh, the first one, in terms of SWOT analysis, knowing where you are good at and what are the weaknesses, like, you know, um, or, fight, or like kind of um, threats that you're facing, uh, competitive kind of uh, methodology. It's not uh, an easy uh, type of research funding opportunities that you're gonna face uh, like uh, the other thing, the act of building a consortium. I mean, networking, that's another challenge for the newcomers from Libya or trying to join like, you know, to compete, for example, to get a funded, like, you know, uh, research opportunities from like uh, Horizon Europe. The other thing in terms of keys to success, which comes first, I mean, is to focus on what you are good at and reading the details of each call or trying, for example, to learn more and to go for the opportunity that you can do in terms of the learning process. Sometimes if you think it's a very competitive, you're gonna take a step forward. You say, I have no chance comparing to uh, Europeans and those who are really with good experience. So how to respond to challenges, how to have the act of uh, networking and uh, forming a consortium, this is uh, another thing, and where the SWOT analysis comes in between. And once again, I would insist of having the presentation because it's like a Bible for us. Thank you. Okay, um, I think that was maybe directed at me, so I'll I'll start with yes. that, but maybe the others can chip in. Um, so the 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 first thing, the first question was um about kind of um the how to build a consortium, I suppose. Yep. Um, the thing I would say is if you don't have experience in EU projects, do not try to build a consortium. Because Ooh. these things, um, it's better for you to join uh, a consortium that's being built because you need to have Ooh. scientific and practical experience of EU projects to be able to coordinate. So the title of coordination is a specific title given to the lead organization who is managing the project. And that is a massive task. They pretty much can't do anything else because 24 hours a day, they are managing these projects and they are the main contact for the European Commission. So they have to deal with all the administration, all the financial management. Um, so I'd say it's finding those key people and you can do that very simply by going on the European Commission website, looking at the existing projects uh, that are out there and uh, when you look um, so I think it's Cordis is the name of the uh, the website that gives all the information about all the different projects that are currently running and you can see who's leading 
and you can see what area it is and what the topic is and um, what they're planning to do, how much money they were given. So you can start to look at, OK, where are the key people here? You know, who is who is coordinating uh, projects in the area that I want and I need to speak to those people so it's it's not just a matter of um, you know just seeing who's out there in general it's a matter of focusing yourself so which companies are out there in the areas that you want get yourself familiar with them reach out to them uh, get yourself a meeting with them and but I would say the next question you're asking about was uh, I suppose about your strengths and in which order to do things um, I would say you have to know yourself first to know what you want to go into. So um, if you're an organization that just goes for anything that's out there, you'll become a generalist and then you will lose experience. What you need to do is focus and keep your experience high so that you offer value uh, to the people in the consortium and for the project itself. So know yourself, know your organization. What are your strengths, first and foremost? The weaknesses is like the secondary thing that I do because you need to know what your strengths are to know in which area you need to focus your, your search. Um, and your call analysis. So I would say focus on strengths first. Um, and then I think that should lead uh, in a nice kind of uh, journey into it's where you need to go. Yeah, right. and, and Phil, yeah. Just sorry, to, go ahead. Just yeah. to add, yeah, just to add a bit to it. I mean, the, the, the key words you use in your presentation uh, included uh, diversity, having a diverse network. So um, organizations are also encouraged that if they are from academia, for instance, they should reach out to the private sector, and also in government to, to form a, a, a triple helix approach uh, to collaboration. So you can have all the, these organizations uh, that, that would complement uh, your, your strengths and your weaknesses. Um, so that once you, um, you, you develop your project mm -hmm. and you, you apply for funding, you have a stronger, uh, a stronger stake in getting um, uh, funding. And in the implementation, you have diverse network and uh, that you can use in, in enhancing uh, in, in, in enhancing the, the, the delivery of your project. And, and also you, you build up and wake up experience uh, that will be needed um, in localizing your, your, your project. And if you are, um, you are academia, for instance, you are leading the project, you know that you have somebody from, uh, you have an in industry person or an industry organization in the private sector uh, who will then work on uptake, which is very important in the commercialization of the research and innovation that comes in. It's very important to ensure that the network partners that are engaging are, are, are still interested in moving forward. Uh, because if it becomes just an academic innovation or project, uh, then you lose out on uh, government interest, which is around policy, or, or even uh, the private sector interest, interest uh, which is about uh, leveraging the knowledge that comes out of the innovation uh, to um, into prototyping and, and commercialization and, and, and solving problems. Yeah, so that, that's what I will add. Uh, thank you. And over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we move to another question. Sorry. From, uh... so, sorry, Ahmed, can I add one thing <laughs> before I leave? Please. Thank you. You know, in response to that, Faith, and yeah, well, what I've decided to do from my end as an NCB is to form or create the research teams of experts um, according to the six clusters, okay, that were decided by the Horizon Europe project. So each team maybe would be successful to join a certain consortium and would be able, like, you know, to add something. So building the research teams who are ready to join, is this a good step forward? Or is it something kind of being like, you know, being ahead of myself and just uh, doing something that could be like delayed later on? Thank you. Um, I, I, it can't hurt for you to understand who you've got available in which areas with which expertise. Um, so absolutely knowing where your expertise lies and, and mm. in which areas that that can only help you to understand which calls are the most interesting for you. Um, so once you know what you've got, then you know which calls to, to search for, which keywords to search for. So, thank yeah, you. I would say that that that's a good start. It is. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rashid, for uh, your questions. So we move to... Uh... Uh, to Rai, Hangui. Thank you, Amit. Um, thank you, uh, Faith, for, for a wonderful presentation. 
and uh, already some of the things which I addressed earlier on in the in the question and answer was that aspect of uh, saying how do you build out that consortium? I think uh, we have heard quite a lot on on that, but uh, I I just sorry. want to sorry. sorry if you can present yourself, please. Sorry, if you can present yourself. Present myself. Yes. Uh, you want me to show the picture or what? Sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> you, your possession from each country, so. Okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm Taurai Wungwev. I'm a lecturer at uh, Sifako Mahato Health Science University in South Africa, based in Pretoria. Uh, most of the other people know it uh, with the former name called Medunsa. And uh, I'm also, I, I'm a lecturer in computer science and information technology. And I'm also the acting manager for Center for Entrepreneurship for Rapid Incubator. Right. Uh, I have two things which I also would want assistance and uh, see where I can be directed uh, on two projects, which I think I would want to start in the coming year, 2024. One aspect is the issue of digitalization. Our institution is moving towards digitalization, and I would want to be uh, actually present and be able to be directed to those people who have worked on such projects and uh, I work on that. Then the second aspect is from the entrepreneurship uh, hub or center. We I'm more interested in looking at a social entrepreneurship. Currently, we are faced with uh, uh, a lot of wastes being dumped everywhere. Why? Because we, we have run out of uh, those uh, dump sites and uh, there's very little maybe in terms of uh, recycling. And I wanted to also to see how I can be assisted in working towards that uh, social entrepreneurship uh, uh, project. Uh, get the links and the directions to say, whom can I work with? And uh, where can I look for uh, the two projects which I would want to, to work on uh, in the coming year? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm I'm going to start, but I'm I'm going to hand over to Marilena in a minute. <laughs> Just warning you. <laughs> um, so the first thing I'd say is um, contact the Enrich in Africa Centre, um, so that you can actually get an understanding of what they offer as services, uh, because they offer services to uh, incubators, but also incubators coming out of universities. Um, they are also involved in the seed project, which I told you about, um, and the seed project is working specifically to support research incubators, I suppose, or research coming out of university and going to market and that whole process and pathway. Um, so that that could be really interesting. So I'd say Jan and Zandila. Zandila is at the Enrich in Africa Center. Um, if you reach out to to both of those at Jan's email address, but the hello at uh, enrichinafrica.com email address, uh, they will be able to start to, to point you in the right direction. Uh, but I wonder, um, I think also the digital innovation hubs initiatives would also be of interest to you. Um, and Marilena, that's why I thought I'd hand over to you if you could explain that. <laughs> sure, sure. Thanks, Faith. Uh, so regarding this, like um, I will send also the link of uh, our project, like Africa on you. Uh, and as Faith suggested, like before, like you can uh, identify the partners of each project, the digital innovation hubs, and uh, directly contact them in order like to get more information on how uh, you could be involved, what they are offering. Because from all these projects that we're implementing, they're like, uh, uh, let's say like the deliverables that we have that can be used later on, like from the digital innovation hubs. So from the African EU project, what we have created is the deployment toolkit uh, that will be, uh, even though the project is finishing uh, next month, January, end of January, uh, we will offer like this uh, for free uh, through our website and like uh, people that there have been like in the African EU online community uh, will get like more information. So like uh, what they suggest is like that uh, you visit our website, you subscribe like to our newsletter so we can add you in our also uh, African EU online community. And uh, connect with the digital innovation hubs we are working on in Africa. Uh, currently we have in um, uh, in Ghana, 
uh, and Nigeria from West Africa and uh, then Tanzania and Uganda from uh, East Africa. Uh, but we had created also an ambassador, ambassadorship uh, program and we have like people like in several like uh, African countries. Uh, so you can contact us like directly. You can find all the information on the website. So I will not like send any other email. You can find everything there and uh, connect uh, with us to see how we can uh, uh, put things uh, together. I hope it helped. Thank you. Thank you, Marilina and Faith for uh, uh, all details given. So we move uh, uh, for um, uh, a trophy, come to. Please open your mic. Thank you, Ahmed, for uh, giving me the question. Yeah, thank. I was just asking to Marilena. Yeah, if for the eight project that she told that she was already start running, if someone can participate on the project or they can on the running pro, ongoing project, if they can go in or or necessary, they need to go for something else or they need to start with another project because. For example, I want to participate on the ongoing project. How can I manage? Thank you. Great. Uh, so regarding this, uh, when a project is already running, it means that there is a, a set consortium and each partner in the consortium have specific tasks and responsibilities. Uh, in case, there are many ways that you could collaborate with the project. One way, like if you want like uh, uh, to participate in the events, yeah, that's like the easiest. Uh, but as like I mentioned also in the chat, because we had like this uh, question again, in case there was like described inside the proposal that there is a need for subcontracting uh, for specific activities, only if that was uh, described in the proposal, uh, then other organization, they can collaborate uh, with the partners to deliver specific tasks. Uh, but I mentioned again that um, uh, in general, like in these like uh, uh, calls, uh, we are really we the, it's really strict to follow what has been written. So if it has been written that uh, they are looking for a subcontractor for a specific task, then like you can offer like your expertise, and there will be like a call like on uh, how they can identify someone to participate. Yeah, and as I mentioned, the easy is like to participate in uh, uh, in the events that uh, the project is uh, implementing. Uh, that's from my side. Okay, thanks, thanks, Marilina. Uh, we move forward to another question from uh, uh, Lee Jibu. Please. If you are here, you can open your mic. Uh, hello. Hello. Hello, I'm Dr. Walid Atta. Um, I'm a fellow of uh, Open Association of Research Society in SA for Pharmacology and Cancer Biology. Uh, actually, I have published many researches about innovations of biotherapeutics in, uh, in cancer, advanced cancer cases. What, what in, did, where did you are from? I'm from Egypt. Okay. Nice to meet you. Okay. Okay. okay nice to meet you. Uh, so uh, I have prepared the methodology of manufacturing these biotherapeutics. It, uh, it adopts a new strategies for cancer treatment. Uh, so um, I have published these researches and their methodologies, and I know how they can be applied on uh, cancer cell lines or uh, xenografting. Uh, for uh, mice, for example, but I need an organization for applications, these researchers uh, make a proposal for them to uh, adopt or uh, uh, provide a fund for these researchers. They are ready to be uh, manufactured, they are ready to be uh, applied uh, in vitro and in vivo. Uh, but I need a specific system, a highly equipped system, you know that uh, Spectrum as spectrometry and liquid chromatography. Uh, also, um, cancer cell lines are slightly expensive and not available uh, too much in Egypt. So uh, I'm looking for organizations that has uh, uh, availability of uh, these uh, requirements and equipments. 
Uh, is there any uh, organization that can adopt uh, my research? Hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Faith, you, you have, uh, if you can just give some... Um, could you just, sorry, I've been answering questions in the chat. <laughs> could you just repeat the question? Uh, Walid, if you can just repeat the question or re your request. Okay, uh, I need an organization for adopting researches. For adopting okay. researches? And yes, and cancer biology and the biopharmaceuticals. Uh, mm. If I could jump in, Faith. Yes, please do, because I'm not sure I can answer that one. <laughs> Sure, yeah, it's not that I have an organization uh, name ready, but like a suggestion would be, because what you are asking is like quite specific, uh, I would suggest that you go... Uh, I previously, but we will send it again. And uh, you check different, like depending on the specific topic that you are interested, uh, that they are related with your research. And you search like around this area and see what specific calls uh, are out. And maybe there is like a match with the, the research, like the topic of the research that you are doing with uh, what like uh, uh, there's a specific call from the EU. Uh, or something else that you could do as a second option is like to go to the CORDIS platform. Uh, we will send it again. Identify projects that they are similar. They are like on research, similar with the topic of your research and contact directly the partner that is responsible for the research. And there might be like a, a connection and interest. I like to uh, uh, adopt your uh, research. I hope uh, it helped. Yes, uh, you can... Uh -huh. Yeah, you can you you use for this platform. Okay, okay. Many thanks for your answer. Thank you, thank you. So we, we move to uh, Ademola. Please. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Um, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Dr. Yes, Ahmed? Yes. yes, please go ahead. Yes. Okay, okay. Malina, go ahead. thank you for your wonderful contribution. And our uh, mama, Mama Faith, what a powerful message you sent to us this morning. I really appreciate you. I'm uh, Ademola from Havan Ikoku University of Education in Nigeria. I'm a lecturer of uh, curriculum and instruction. Curriculum and instruction department. So, I, I just want to ask, I know this thing is focused on entrepreneurship, but in case of the West Africa, there's no way business can grow in unrest environment. Many of our children in West Africa, they are in IDP, that is internally displaced area. Now, there are lots of things I've been doing concerning that area. But thank you for the area of entrepreneurial research. But what about intervention? Intervention, like having an area on intervention of IDP. I am just asking for asking uh, for, for saving life state because business cannot grow where there's no fee, where there's cure. Please, what is your take on that, on IDP? How can we have, like, as an expert in the area of pedagogy system, I am carrying out this some survey on how the curriculum development implementation is being done. Those people in RDPs, do they receive enough education? Because when they are not educated, they will become a nuisance in the environment. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, if I understood, so um, it's related to a curriculum so for to prepare a curriculum. Th this is your question. Yeah, for IDP. Okay. To, to investigate the implementation and to carry out how we can add value to IDP ah. children. Okay. So, Faith, if you can... Or, My own is on intervention, intervention, intervention. Um, I, I can't really speak about curriculum or anything like that. We we work on EU projects, but we're not involved in 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 curriculum. I'm not sure whether that's something maybe Ahmed or or Marilena whether whether you can answer better. If if, if it is a question of implementation of curriculum, 
I think it related to Erasmus uh, projects, not on not not Horizon Europe project because in Horizon Europe project there is research and innovation, and for education in general we have Erasmus Plus and there is a lot of opportunities. It is the same uh, platform funding and tenders uh, opportunities portal, but just you 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 must check uh, and select Erasmus Plus and you will see. There is a lot of uh, call of proposal actually, and the deadline for 2024. And we can, of course, uh, see the possibility to to uh, to uh, to participate in uh, uh, some projects. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, please you can contact me by email africaduraxis.net. I will send you all details related to Erasmus Plus. Okay. Uh, Ahmed also so just to add on I also sent a link. Uh, there is also another uh, the webgate uh, page specifically for some calls of Erasmus Plus, which are uh, for the capacity building of universities, capacity building like of uh, organizations or uh, youth organizations. Uh, so you can check both uh, the previous one of the funding and tender, and also that one specifically for uh, some calls of Erasmus, depending on what you are looking for. Well, sorry, Ahmed. There was a project <laughs> by Erasmus called. Uh... Tuning Africa, Tuning Africa took a place from 2013 to 2018. Okay, how to tune curriculums from African countries to take them up to the ECTS standards by the EU level. I think he's asking about the uh, projects about tuning, how to improve, or for example, uh, create solid and concrete university programs according to the EU values UK or European Union standards. So as I said, Erasmus has got too many projects in that and one has been finished already. And we took part uh, in that in four fields uh, from Libya, uh, the field of law, tourism, uh, architecture, also nursing. So, I mean, there is a great chance in Erasmus Plus and there was a previous experience. Thank you. That was something to add. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Rashad. Uh, if you can just share the link in the, uh, the yes, uh, yeah, please uh, do it. Okay, we move forward for the last two questions, and we have uh, uh, Lijibu. Please, if you are here, uh, open your mic. If not, we move to Jerome. Jerome, please open your mic. Uh, can you open your mic, Jerome? Okay, okay. Uh, good morning. Good, good morning. morning, Dr. Ahmed. Good morning. Good morning here. Okay, please. Uh, sorry, uh, I joined a little bit late. You see, uh, information here is difficult. Right, currently I'm a student, postgraduate, I'm a PhD student in AC Wells, but I'm in... Uh, Research and Development, National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure. So I believe this uh, the no, whole from, idea is to... You know, please, from which country? Okay, I'm from, I mean, Nigeria. I'm in Nigeria. Nigeria, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, please. I'm in Nigeria, okay. presently in Anambra, Anambra State. Okay, good. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm pursuing some uh, investigation, doing some work on uh, nanotechnology. And... Uh, Funding is crucial here. People, great people, great mind, but we don't have this access to the funds. The school which I'm pursuing, uh, my postgraduate, they were able to send this link, even though it got to me late. Most times we don't get this information whenever, even if we get the information, it becomes late. So please, I believe uh, this whole idea is to help uh, African. I know you will have a target, specifically for the African or West African uh, sub-region. A lot of people need the funding. Me uh, particularly, I need it. Uh, we you can do you can do much meaningful thing without the funding, and it's really difficult here. You can just uh, trying to survive to make other things, uh, so many bills and all that in your family, and then to pursue your, 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 your academic uh, 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 
studies. So I don't know. I don't know. I've provided my email. I don't mind talking to some people directly so that uh, I can, you know, explain more of uh, what we need here and how we need it to move on. And uh, and again, I believe uh, this uh, what we do in where I'm uh, doing my research and development. We can buy some of these uh, things from Europe or the America. We can uh, re-engineer, then find areas. The re-engineering is also good for us here. So we find areas we can now adopt our own, uh, 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 our own, uh, our own, our own materials to make it more local. Something we can easily uh, assess here, so that to make it uh, more cheaper. You see, so everything uh, circle down in the funding, which is lacking, seriously lacking. So uh, I think I, I represent other people. I'm speaking, but I represent uh, a lot of people, scores of people who who want to who want to move in in such uh, apply for such funding. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you. Thank you, I request, uh, yeah. thank you, Jerome. We are actually uh, uh, working in uh, a good work plan for uh, 2024 for your access. We will organize okay. a lot. It is a lot of uh, practical online workshops, a lot of info session, and you can, of course, you can participate for free and try to learn more and get a lot of information on how to get the opportunity. So be connected with us, try to visit the website, put your Access Africa in Google, and you will see the yellow button, try to, to, to subscribe, and we, we will receive all information in your, in, in your mailbox, okay? And uh, okay. of course, you will get the opportunity because there is a lot. Okay, so okay. Uh, actually, we we move to the last question for today um, with Patrick. Thank you. Yes, Patrick. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm good Patrick. I, I'm Patrick Munyao from Kenya. Nice to meet you. Yeah, please, Patrick. Yeah. So I am asking if you if uh, you offer funding for archaeology projects, and if yes, do you offer postgraduate scholarships? The other question is about uh, I am asking if I am participating in a challenge called uh, digital and green transition. Yeah. So. Uh, Kenya has uh, fossil fuel to generate power. Yeah, so we are trying to come up with a solution through the digital and the green transition uh, that can uh, we can use to generate power without carbon <coughs> emission. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we, we don't understand if you, if you can repeat, uh, Patrick, uh, your question or uh, give more details. Okay, I am saying, I am yes. participating in a, I am participating in a challenge that is aiming to cap the carbon emission to the atmosphere uh, because Kenya I've been using, uh, I've been relying on thermal power plants using fossil fuel that uh, emit carbon emissions, that emit carbon to the atmosphere. So we are trying to solve this issue through greener digital transition. So I'm asking <clears throat> if you, you can fund project. Okay. Uh, I understand. That means that you 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 look to to find the project or uh, a call of proposal related to uh, green transition. This is your question. If it is, of course, yes. I'm asking. So if it okay. is, yeah, yeah, yeah. because we have. Africa Initiative 2, and uh, for Africa Initiative 2, there is a lot of uh, call uh, of proposal. Okay, we will, uh, uh, there is some for funding and some for open. 
But try to uh, email me at africa at your access.net. I will send you the, the link of all uh, call of proposal related to Africa Initiative 2 and the green transition because uh, this is, uh, 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 I think there is a lot of core topics related to this thematic. Okay. Okay, I think, uh, of course, we, we have received a lot of questions uh, in, uh, in, in the box. So I think uh, we come to the end and uh, I will give the floor to, uh, to the final word from Faith and uh, to Marilina. So Faith, the final word. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone for attending. It's been great to to meet you, um, even digitally. Um, and I have been trying to answer as many of the questions as I can in the Q and A section as possible. Um, if if I couldn't answer the question, I haven't. But if I could, I have. Um, but I'm sure some of the other uh, speakers here will hopefully be able to answer some as well. Um, but I just want to encourage you to um, to not use this as the end point, but use this uh, this information day as a starting point. Um, and uh, if you want to get going with EU projects um, and connecting in, um, now is the point to start. And even if that's starting small by just contacting one company, that one company can lead to five, can lead to 50, can lead to 200, you know, let it grow um, and take your time with it. Uh, but do the work, do the research, find out who's out there, what's out there. And um, and I wish you every success uh, with what you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Faith. Uh, we move to Yao. Right, thank you very much, uh, Ahmed. Um, what I would say is that uh, collaboration is key. Uh, from what participants have been saying and the questions they've been asking, uh, it's, a, it's, it's about the fact that they want to be able to build on diverse skill sets, uh, uh, have diverse experience from different organizations. And so it would be better that within the triple helix approach of collaborating with ac academia, with the private sector, and with government, uh, institutions from these, um, uh, these sectors can greatly help uh, in getting a diverse uh, group of skill sets and experience, and more importantly, also uh, enhancing on the strength of the of the of the uh, of the application, the application process. But more importantly, whatever we are doing uh, as African experts, we need to also localize. It is very important that we localize. It's, it is through localization with our innovation and uh, and, and entrepreneurial spirit that will transform. Uh, the continent and of course we we'll also build new insights for our partners in europe um, because if you don't lo localize we don't bring up new because the the, the, the new knowledge uh, are embedded in, in 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 our local in local fabric and so whatever we are doing the ideas that we are pushing we need to ensure that how how does it solve problems locally whether locally in your countries or locally across the continent um, so that we can build new insights that uh, we can effectively engage with our partners from Europe and also help them with the new insights that will help them um, in, in avoiding uh, innovation stagnation in their various uh, uh, you know, sectors and, and jurisdictions. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, now for Marina. Yeah, Finally. thank you also, like from my side, like um, uh, it's not easy to get the funding or to uh, get like uh, into a consortium. Uh, we never said that, but uh, it really was like uh, to try and it needs a lot of devotion and commitment from your side uh, because there's so much competition. There are so many organizations and uh, there's so much like um, uh, offer like from people. So when you contact an organization, be really specific about what is your expertise. We can not do like everything perfect. You are good in research, contact then the organization that you have like this expertise, like proven one, and you, you can showcase. Uh, because as an organization also, we receive so many mails. And if it's something not specific, we don't have like the time uh, to make calls with everybody. So when you contact, be really specific, go uh, like to all these websites, uh, we mentioned it really was and devote time in reading the call for application, devote time in uh, exploring these websites uh, in order to be specific on what you are uh, looking for. 
And uh, it has been really nice, like all this interaction and questions. Uh, Ahmed, there's so much need for uh, what uh, we have been doing. And thanks for bringing uh, Youth Makers Hub uh, uh, on board for that. Back to you, Ahmed. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Marilina, for this uh, a great co collaboration. For my side, I have three words. So be informed, be connected, and be proactive. And uh, we can say now bye-bye and see you soon, I hope. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Mama Pete. Bye bye. <laughs>